Hi guys, it's me, Swank Ivy, and I'm back to make another video for my video series, Letters to an Asexual. This is number three, and I'm going to read you a letter I got back in June from the website OkCupid. And, um, but this guy, this is not, this guy is not a jerk or anything. He's just, um, someone who may have some, uh, questions and comments that some of you may have been wondering about my take on. And so I'll just use his letter as a springboard into talking about a couple of issues that I think are important. So anyway, um, not a jerk, just somebody who had questions. Um, his subject line was hi and some questions, which you can imagine what some of the questions might have been. And um, here he goes. Um, here's his letter. You seem like a very articulate and interesting person. The asexuality thing is quite confusing to me. What I don't understand is why you'd bother to put up a very lengthy and intricate profile with pictures on a dating website. You are pretty much asking for jerks like me to bother you with idiotic and inappropriately personal questions about your lifestyle. It seems like a recipe for aggravation, and I have to wonder why you set yourself up for it that way. If I were asexual, which I can honestly say I never have been for even one moment in my entire life, I would shun places like this entirely and with great gratitude. I don't know what that means. Great gratitude. Or make a blank profile just to take the tests. It's strictly loneliness of a particular kind that drives me to this. This drive is directly linked to sex, though it's not exclusively comprised of a desire for sex. I want companionship with a woman that includes a level of emotional intimacy that I cannot achieve without that kind of physical closeness. Yes, I am sure of this. I've tried it the other way, but the sex thing always rears its ugly head. Pardon the expression. If I could do without it and have only asexual relationships, I think I would get a lot more work done and overall be much less discontented in my life. Sadly, this is not an option without medical intervention. I envy you in a way. Though I confess I do not remotely understand your situation, it is literally inconceivable to me. But if it works for you, mazel tov. I just had to vent that, because I'm sitting here feeling dissatisfied with my lot in life, wondering what to do about it, and then I see you. And though you do not possess the drive that is making me discontent, you're still here, in this veil of tears, exposing yourself to the bizarre world of internet dating. Why? So I thanked him for saying that I'm interesting and articulate, and told him it didn't surprise me to hear that the asexuality thing confused him. In response to why I'd put a lengthy and intricate profile on a dating site with pictures, um, here's what I said. I had taken a few tests on the site back in 2005 when things were starting up around here, and back then you could take a test and then send your results to others, asking them to also take the test and compare notes. I think it might have even been my sister taking the tests that caused me to come here and compare with her. But of course, you couldn't save the results without making an account, so that was the beginning. But then it had a customizable profile, and you know, basically one of the things I've noticed about myself is that if it is possible to customize something, I'll do it. I, tend to, I also tend to do everything in a lengthy and intricate way. This is nothing. You should see my webpage. Ha! Um, so in response to his suggestion that I'm just encouraging jerks to ask me personal questions if I make a profile, ah, well, actually, you'd be wrong. Despite the severity of my warning, which insinuates that maybe I get ridiculous unwanted attention all the time, 90% of my interaction on this site has been positive. I have met people on this site who have become dear friends, both on and offline, and believe it or not, most are respectful in their first approaches. I chose to stay here when it became possible to choose here for categories. That said, of course I get some attention I don't want, but I get that from my webpage too. You might as well ask me why if I don't get, want to get attention. I bother to go in public without wearing a heavy coat to disguise the fact that I have breasts. Because after all, isn't putting them on display an invitation for attention I don't want? Bottom line is, I'm not going to take special steps to avoid attention of the type I don't want in general, if in general, behaving the way I do currently results in good experiences. I wanted to take tests, make an honest profile, and meet people just like anyone else on this site. I just don't happen to want to have sex with the people I meet, and I fail to see how wanting to use OkCupid for non-dating related purposes co constitutes false advertising, you know? And just as an aside from the letter, um, I've had that argument a few times, like about why I would wear clothes that make me look nice. And um, just so you know, I don't ever put on any outfit, like, you know, not even a bikini, um, with the specific intention of attracting people or teasing them or bringing them in by my body. You know, I mean, I recognize that most men find women's bodies attractive, um, and that if I wear clothes that flatter me, I'm just going to have to deal with that. Um, but that doesn't bother me, you know. I mean, basically, if they're attracted to me, that's their problem. Um, and I still expect them to to respect my wishes and not act like I've advertised some kind of deal in the newspaper, and if I don't walk around in a trench coat, then therefore I'm guilty of false advertising or something. You know, I mean, I like to look nice, and I think that some outfits that happen that make me look nice also make me look attractive, and there's nothing wrong with me wanting to look presentable and pretty. Um, but to tell you the truth, you know, I'm, 
if I'm talking to somebody and you know I'm talking to them online and I find out the re main reason they're messaging me is that they like my pictures and they don't care about my profile or my edit my my um, essays or anything like that. The main thing I feel is disappointment, you know, like a sinking sort of feeling, and you know, that's not really consistent with if I was doing it just to try to get attention from from them because I don't feel like that's positive attention. I don't like it at all, and um, you know, there's nothing wrong with my appearance catching a guy's eye, you know, like which spurs him to talk to me. But I do expect him to actually care who I am after that initial catalyst, and um, if he wants to look, let him look. You know, no hard feelings, no harm done. Um, but, you, I mean, if you think that I put on sexy clothes on purpose just to suck people in by dressing sexy, I mean, then uh, you might as well say that uh, women who get raped at, are asking for it by dressing sexy. You know, I'm, and I should clarify that I don't mean sexy as in I wear, like, sexually explicit, revealing clothing. You know, just I wear nice clothes that um, are not gigantic uh, baggy, baggy sweaters or something or pota potato sacks. Um, you know, so what I say, which amounts to a big no, should not speak louder than what you think I'm saying based on what I'm wearing or the fact that I have an OK Cupid profile. Okay, back to the letter. Um, digression over. Um, okay, so when he said that um, his drive for companionship does involve physical closeness and he can't have that closeness without it, I said this. Plenty of people's idea of their ideal mate includes sexual attraction and sex. Doesn't bother me. About how he would get more work done and be more content if he was asexual, I said this. Well, surely most people would get more done if they weren't distracted by the urge to mate. Um, but uh, getting more done isn't always the most important thing in life either. Sexual interest is part of a person's identity and worldview. It causes its share of problems, but uh, from what I've heard and seen, it can also be transforming in a positive way. Um, let's see. And in response to his thing about how even though I'm not dis even though I'm not discontent without sex, he can't understand why I'm still exposing myself to this veil of tears. I said this. In case I didn't make it clear above. I do not view OkCupid as only a dating site. I have never signed myself up on a website that is just for internet dating. When I made a profile, I actually did not even know it was a dating site, though the setup was different in 2005 when I began my adventures here. Its matching system is unique and interesting, and I like its interface. I do not use most of its features, i.e. quick match, or use it to actively seek companionship, but sometimes I'm chatting with someone through here and I see another person who's supposed to be similar to me, and I read their profile and have fun contacting them. I've really only had a couple of truly idiotic responses from people. It has not been a so-called veil of tears for me at all. And I closed up and told him if he had more questions he could ask me. Um, so, like, to wrap up, I'll just say that I get this sort of comment once in a while from people um, from certain places on my website, too. You know, like, I write about stuff I hate. Like, I have an essay on my website about how I hate the book Aragon by Christopher Paulini. And, you know, then people write me and say stuff like, why would you bother to spend all this time talking about something you don't even like? And, you know, my answer to that is my same reason for why I make an essay on asexuality or a YouTube video or whatever. You know, because my dislike or my disinterest is not the same as apathy. It's not something I just don't care about. It's, these are things I do care about. And, I mean, I think er the Aragon book was uh, badly written and, you know, because tons of people just eat it up and it's a bestseller and all this stuff and they're oblivious to its flaws, you know, that kind of irritates me. So, you know, I rambled about why I think it's really bad based on my site or, or written. I, wrote about it on my site, you know, based on my, my thoughts on it. You know, so, um, you know, it's important, and asexuality is important, and, you know, it's, sex is a non-issue, but not wanting sex is not a non-issue, because tons of people have written me and told me how much my videos and my essays have helped them. So, you know, having a bunch of stuff I dislike on my site, or, you know, something that I'm not interested in on my site, it's detailed and comprehensive and whatnot because that's how I do everything. And I've read so many people tell me, you know, you helped my friends understand, I sent it to my brother, blah, 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 you know, and I have a strong opinion about things. And nobody ever gets on my case about how come I have four fan sites about books. You know, it's like, well, why would you waste your time making book fan sites? It's like, it seems like only when it's a negative opinion is when they get annoyed and act like I'm wasting my time. So, you know, they decide that I must have some deeper reason or other hidden emotion that I'm blasting all this stuff all over the internet uh, to avoid admitting to, like they say I'm jealous of Aragon's author, or I'm really a lesbian, so I'm talking about all this crap on my website to avoid having to say so. But you know, the way that I spew content all over the internet, sometimes way past the point of too much information, you know, do you really think I have any reason to make it that complicated? Is it really that difficult to imagine that I really might be doing things for the reason that I say I am? That's all the time I have.
So uh, be well.